Dear young adults, Om Sai Ram. Welcome to the January workshop of the Satya Sai Young Adult Talent Development Program of 2019. Before we kickstart today's workshop, let us start with three Oms. Om. Today's session will be facilitated by Brother Sayan Anandaraj of Canada. Brother Sayan is a graduate of the SSIO International Leadership Program. In 2017, he is a co-leader of the International Sadhana of Love Subcommittee. Brother Sayan was also actively involved in the 2016 World Youth Festival, was also part of the coordination team for the 2017 SSIO Leadership Program. He has been an office bearer and a guru at the Victoria Park Sai Center in Canada. Professionally, Brother Sian is currently working as a mechanical engineer, specializing in HVAC applications in the healthcare and instrumental sector. Brother Sian, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Brother. Jay Sairam to everyone. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the uh, YATD uh, team for allowing me to speak to my dear brothers and sisters and also to Swami for this blessed opportunity. Thank you everyone for joining. We're going to kick off right away. Um, first slide please on long-term goals. Okay, uh, I want you all to name one long-term goal that you guys have in mind and I want you to write this down and or keep it aside. Uh, as we're going to use it later on during this workshop. So feel free to think of one right now. And if you'd like to share, feel free to share on the side chat window. Okay. So uh, today we will be discussing a little more in detail on what it is uh, that we mean by vision and resilience, kind of distinguishing between the two uh, and how we can uh, set our visions and uh, continue striving forward. We're also going to look at how to bounce back from difficult situations. Uh, we've all found ourselves in a difficult situation at one point or another in our lives. So we're going to look at how we bounce back from that and how we keep moving forward. We're also going to look at how to set effective goals, and that's through a step-by-step -step process, uh, looking more so along the long-term approach uh, to goal setting, and also how we can motivate ourselves through self-growth. Uh, we want to try and maintain our self-confidence and self-esteem as best as we can, and self-growth is of utmost importance to all of us. Let's start off with vision. So what exactly do we mean by vision? Uh, Vision is defined as the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. So in hindsight, vision can be exactly what we want it to be. Uh, we control the vision that we set for ourselves. And setting goals, that's another thing that we should consider with a long-term approach. Uh, long-term success in mind helps us stay on track while developing our self-confidence. So when we do set out a vision for ourselves, um, you know, are we looking ahead, whether it's a few months from now, a few weeks from now, uh, or even a few years from now? Um, how far ahead are we looking? The importance of long-term approach in goal setting is that we develop our self-confidence in our approach. Um, it's always best to helping you feel good about yourself and feel good about the decisions and the expectations that you set for yourself. Um, being sure that we're confident in the way that we approach our goals, uh, even just from the attitude, uh, right from the get-go, is something that often dictates our success uh, more often than not. A clear mind is also something that we absolutely need to have. Uh, as clear thoughts can lead to clear actions. And if, you, if you've if you all uh, heard of Swami uh, discussing purity in thought, word, and deed, the principle behind that, 
it kind of, it correlates very closely to having a clear mind uh, when planning forward. Um, so something to keep in mind as we move ahead. So what has our dear Swami said about vision? To acquire the highest knowledge, one has to purify the vision. This means one should avoid seeing what is obnoxious. One should strive to see only that which is sacred and pure. What man sees is like seeds sown in the heart. Evil scenes give rise to evil thoughts. Good scenes evoke good thoughts. When sacred scenes are implanted in the heart, there will be no room for bad feelings or thoughts to grow in the heart. And this is from Sati Sai Speaks, uh, Volume 31, Chapter 3, uh, from February the 5th, 1998. So I'll give you guys a minute to take a look, another read of this. What exactly do you guys think Swami is trying to tell us here? Sister Shalu writes, uh, see good. Yes, absolutely. Um, Karthika and Arun write, watch your thoughts. Priya Darshni writes, be good, see good, and do good. Yes, absolutely. Dr. Somnath writes, see good always. Abina writes, we are what we ingest in media, etc. So make sure it is positive. Absolutely, sister. Thoughts into our heart as well. So, absolutely. Uh, Dulakshya writes, always think good, do good, and see good. Watch your words, actions, thoughts, character, and heart to have a pure mind and connecting positively to God. Absolutely on point. Thank you guys so much for the awesome answers. Let's move on. So, resilience. Resilience is defined as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And as you guys can see there, there's a little island with a tower on it, and it's getting uh, hit by the waves uh, surrounding that island. And quite often, I find myself in situations like that in life where difficulties can come in droves and waves. Uh, and I try my best to be the little tower uh, that doesn't bend too quickly. So... As you all know, we all face obstacles in our lives that can really weigh down on us mentally. But having the ability to shine when the going gets tough really helps enable us to continue striving towards our goals. So it's something to keep in mind as we move ahead. Similar to the waves hitting the islands, we can sometimes face obstacles in the same way. So being sure that we focus on the end goal and keep moving, even during those difficult times, can really help. Um, in moving forward. So, what has Swami said about resilience? Develop self-confidence, which will lead you to bliss. Never give room for worries and anxieties. Gain sufficient strength of the body and mind to face boldly the difficulties, losses, and sorrows that may confront you in life. This will be facilitated if you practice the four F's taught in our educational system. Follow the master, your conscience. Face the devil. Fight till the end. And finish the game. What is the inner meaning of the first three letters of the alphabet? A, B, C. In the English language, they mean always be careful. The same dictum is given by the Upanishad by exhorted exhort exhorting a man to arise, awake, and stop, not till the goal is reached. So taking a look at this, guys, uh, give you guys a minute to take a look, and uh, analyze the quote. Um, what exactly do you guys think Swami's trying to say here? So Sister Gayathri writes, gain self-confidence and then preserve even in difficult times. Persevere, sorry, even in difficult times, the four F's will help with that. Absolutely, sister. Dulexia writes, having self-confidence with a positive mind, always even in difficult situations, will help connect to God. Absolutely. Sobana writes, using the four F's to help guide you and give you the courage to face adversity. Yes, 
Those are some awesome answers, everyone. So moving on, let's take a look at someone who's uh, faced quite a bit of adversity and, you know, um, been a resilient beacon of light for quite a few people, and that's Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is a classic example of someone who was able to overcome many of her life challenges to achieve extraordinary success in life. Oprah had a disastrous upbringing, suffered abuse and hardships during her early years. At age 22, she was fired from her TV shows, TV show at a local Baltimore station and moved to daytime TV. In many cases, this would have been seen as a step down rather than a step up. Oprah used this as motivation to continue striving towards her goals, which led her to have the number one rated talk show in the world. When everything fell apart, she had the determination to keep moving forward. The soul-searching paid off as she rose to be the most powerful businesswoman. And a quote from Oprah that I feel uh, a lot of us can connect to, including myself, is, There's no such thing as failure. Failure is just life trying to move us in another direction. So keeping this in mind, can you guys name or get provide other examples of those uh, who have overcome uh, significant obstacles in their lives? Nelson Mandela, resounding answer. Yes, absolutely. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for quite some time, and he overcame quite a few challenges to come and lead a nation, which is pretty astounding when you think about it. So absolutely, perfect example. Mahatma Gandhi, yes. Mother Teresa, yes. Mahatma Gandhi also uh, overcame uh, jail time, and prosecution, and he was a... Uh, he was quite the leader in the fight for independence, so absolutely. Maya Angelou, interesting answer, yes. Those are some awesome answers, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. Next slide, please. A quote that I find I really relate towards, uh, and this ties perfectly into our next segment, is uh, the idea of no excuses, and this is from Barack Obama. And he states that change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So something to keep in mind as we move ahead is how can we identify obstacles? So the definition of obstacle is something that blocks one's way or prevents or hinders progress. And sometimes we are often blinded by desires and vices that don't allow us to kind of broaden our horizons uh, when analyzing our own obstacles. So being realistic about our expectations uh, goes quite a long way in determining what hinders our progress and what doesn't. Also, not losing sight of who we are. You know, personal integrity uh, is extremely important and maintaining it when we set expectations for ourselves, you know, is it something that we're doing for us or is it something that we're doing to please those around us? Um, is, some, is the general rule of thumb that I keep in mind. Uh, so obstacles, sometimes we might have a difficult time, you know, assessing that, you know, this is an obstacle in my life rather than something that I absolutely need, whether that be uh, friends or uh, money or whatnot. It is something to keep in mind. What hinders our thoughts, words, and deed can often lead to analysis in other aspects of our life, uh, which include work, family, and friends. Uh, and sometimes assessing ourselves can be a little difficult. You know, it's hard to critique ourselves uh, sometimes. So it's important that we remember that we stay true to the process. You know, don't put yourself down, but also be honest with yourself that, you know, I'm assessing it fairly based on, you know, the situation at hand. So keeping that in mind, we're going to look at how we can bounce back. Sometimes we face situations where we're really kind of out of our comfort zone or we've uh, been hit down and um, we've had to overcome a little bit of adversity in our lives. So how do we bounce back from these types of situations? Um, I think the important thing to realize is that we hold the keys to change. 
no one's going to come in and step in and help change our situation. We need to step in and change our own situations. So, you know, when you when you find yourself in a situation where you're um, facing some adversity or uh, you're feeling a little down on yourself, take charge and try your best. You know, um, oftentimes when we put our best foot forward, Swami always helps us out in some way, shape, or form. So keep that in mind when, you know, sometimes situations do happen uh, that's based on circumstance. Try your best and keep trying to shine as, as bright as you can. Sometimes we fear failure. I know um, for quite some time I feared failure, and to a certain degree I still do. But failure, I find, is a stepping stone to success. Um, quite often, more than not, when we fail once or twice, uh, we either say, you know, that's it, I'm going to quit, or no, this is not the right thing for me. And we kind of, you know, take a step back or we give up on uh, what we're doing. Um, don't fear it as, you know, this is the end all. Fear, Look at it as a stepping stone to get to where you need to get to. Uh, that's how I view failure now. And staying persistent. Sometimes challenges and obstacles come our way. Um, but staying persistent, you know, through adversity, through these obstacles and challenges, uh, sometimes helps lead us, leads us to uh, some amazing results, and it brings out the best in us too. And my number one policy is never fear. Swami's always there. Swami's always been guiding us and continues to guide us on our various spiritual paths. So be sure to know that Swami's always behind you, no matter what. So, that goal that you guys had wrote down earlier, I want you guys to dig that back up. Um, and that's going to be uh, the goal that we're going to use for today's exercise. So, I'm going to ask that you guys break out either a, a notepad, a piece of paper, or even a Word document. And I want you guys to write this goal down. And I also want you to write... Thinking about this uh, in the grand scope of things, your goal, I want you guys to write down three to five steps that will help you achieve this goal. So I'll give you guys a, about a minute to go through that. And if anyone would like to share their goals, by all means, feel free to share. I know one of my goals is to uh, lose weight. Um, all this holiday eating set me back a few pounds, but something I'd like to uh, at, at least like to lose close to 10 pounds by the beginning of the summer. As you guys are writing down your goals, um, I want you guys to come up with uh, a few key milestones. That can either be one milestone or uh, two to three milestones where you can measure your success. Um, so say for my weight loss goal, um, I want to lose 10 pounds, but say if I lose 3 pounds in another 3 weeks, I'll see that as a measurable milestone. Or if I lose 3 pounds in another 5 weeks, let's say, I can use that as a measurable milestone that'll indicate to me that, you know what, Cyan, you're still on the right path, continue going. So be sure as you're writing down uh, your three to five steps, identify a key milestone that will help uh, keep you powering ahead. And as you guys are writing these milestones, keep in mind that honesty is the best policy. Um, as long as you're honest with yourselves and honest with your goal, um, you guys can achieve it uh, no matter what. So keeping that in mind, I want you guys to use that as your exercise and take away from this. Uh, keeping that in mind, we're going to move on to self-analysis. So when we're setting goals, how exactly can we go about it? You know, what sort of uh, thought process can we uh, go with it? And what I quite often find myself doing, uh, and, you know, this can apply to uh, any sort of, any type of goal setting, uh, and this is just, just an example, uh, not saying you have to use this, but something I find really helps me is when I'm setting goals, I ask myself, you know, what's the benefit? Am I, I, 
tend to think of the overall benefit, not only to myself uh, and how it affects me moving forward, but also those around me. Um, you know, whether that's my family, uh, whether that's uh, my closest friends, uh, my colleagues at work, is this goal going to benefit me? And quite often, you know, that could mean uh, a change of scenery, possibly removing the negative negativity, uh, maybe distancing yourself from bad company. Um, that can also be uh, a benefit, although sometimes we might not be as willing to part ways with uh, certain people. Uh, that might actually be in our best interest. So something to keep that keep in mind as you set your goal. Um, also, happiness. Happiness for me is uh, a very plays a large part in my goal setting process. Um, am I going to be happy at the end of the day, or am I just doing this just for the sake of it? Uh, am I doing this for someone other than myself? Uh, you know, sometimes we all encounter peaks and valleys uh, when we come across change. It's not always going to be easy sledding, uh, but as if we're happy, it makes it a lot e a lot smoother, a lot easier. You know, there are going to be some good days and some not so good days, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, if when you ask yourself, are you happy and will you be happy, and if the answer is yes, more often than not, you're on the right path. So happiness also plays quite a uh, quite an effective uh, role um, in the goal setting process. And patience, you know, sometimes when we're, we try it once or twice and it doesn't re quite work out the way we want to, we give up and say, okay, I give up. But is it something really that you want to go for? And if it is, you know, always, th always know that Swami is always there no matter what the outcome is. So one thing I quite often tell myself is when I start something, Start something is to plan ahead and improve and improve yourself. Um, when I when I plan on a goal, I always look, you know, plan ahead. Um, is this improving myself? And if the answer to both of them is yes, then okay, you know, it's something worth striving towards. And more often than not, it turns out successful. So uh, this is just me sharing my tips and uh, ideas. Um, so something to keep in mind and clarity, you know, what do, exactly do you want to achieve and how do you want to do it? You know, being, being clear in your actions, uh, words and deeds can quite often lead to some amazing results uh, that help you uh, achieve the goals that you strive for. So something also to keep in mind. I see here that uh, Dr. Somnath had written uh, something here. Number one, offer the goal to Swami. Number two, plan effectively to start to set SMART objectives. Number three, do right to achieve the objectives. Number four, check, evaluate. And number five, act correctively. Very well said. I, some, that's a really interesting breakdown there, Doctor. So thank you for that. Okay, so moving from self-analysis, we're going to look into a, a few scenarios um, that kind of depict uh, some situations that we might actually face in our everyday lives. So, next slide, please. So, uh, this is a scenario. I'm going to read it out, and uh, we'll go through some questions. So, Jessica works for a multinational company. She has climbed the ladder from the bottom and has devoted many long hours in her role, which has resulted in her excelling at her work in comparison to her peers. Through her hard work, she has attained the role position of a senior executive in the finance department of the company. However, her new supervisor is causing her added stress by assigning her tasks without taking into consideration her existing workload. As a result, Jessica has begun to dread going to work, and while she tries her best to complete the tasks, her efforts are taken for granted by her supervisor. Last week, Jessica pitches a novel idea that intends to optimize the financial operations of the company. Her enthusiasm and dedication to improving the existing systems are stifled by her supervisor. He admonishes her harshly for her ideas, not being good enough. 
she is left feeling confused and doubtful of her own capabilities. Two weeks later, to her surprise, Jessica finds that her earlier plans for financial optimization have been announced as a new process that the company is implementing. Jessica is furious to see that her work has been stolen and her ideas are being posed as those of upper management. She feels disempowered and struggles to find the motivation to work. She wishes to openly call the supervisor out for this injustice, yet she fears the consequences. So this is an interesting scenario. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a minute to kind of absorb that. And the question I have for you guys is, what would you do in this scenario or in this situation? How would you guys react? I'll give you guys a minute here. Sister Arena writes a very true scenario. Rushka writes, address it with supervisor and management. Okay, so you, you, you'd... Uh, you address the situation uh, head on. Very nice. Sister Gayatri writes, agreed, and pray to Swami for courage. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes I would I would get pretty nervous trying to bring that up with supervisor and management. Um, but yes, I would I would pray to Swami for courage. Absolutely, sister. Indu Prakash Pragasham writes. True happenings. I will be sad initially, but leave it to Swami, for I believe it's his play to bring us on track. In due course, Swami showed the way out. Hmm, interesting. So you leave it in the hands of Swami. Brother Sarishan writes, She should not be discredited for her ideas. She should be bold and let them know that it was her idea initially. Clearly, the supervisor intimidated by her potential. Very well could be intimidated by her potential, brother. Uh, well said. Sister Bina writes, I would be upset at first, but may recognize that it is my ego that wanting the credit. Maybe bring it up in a non-confrontational way if it will affect my efforts in the future. Interesting. Interesting. So, you, you would bring it up, uh, I'm assuming, Sister Bina, in a way where you would avoid causing a stir uh, while maintaining um, your position with the company, I would assume. Harry writes, address and speak up first. If it doesn't work, probably a change of environment is needed, perhaps a new job. Dr. Somnath writes, react with Swami's five values in mind. Deluxia writes, talk to the supervisor about the situation with a positive attitude. Hold Swami's hand to guide. Brother Sarishan writes, a speaker of truth should be bold. Brother Perjean writes, take the boss into confidence, for she has got a position very recently, and it might be the positives to learn how to understand people management for her new position. Uh, leave the rest up to Swami. Very nice. Wow, these are some awesome answers, guys. Try to speak, and Yuri writes, try to speak... Uh, to someone in a higher position and seek guidance if there is a way to justice or not, and that would decide further action. Interesting. Wow, these are some awesome answers, guys. Thank you so much. So we're going to look at, you know, just the overall situation uh, as we move to the next slide. You know, quite often we find ourselves, um, and as Sister Irina had mentioned, uh, it's a true scenario. It, it's happened uh, to many of us uh, sometimes. And we find ourselves in these situations where we think, how can we power ahead? You know, how do we overcome this? And it's important to realize that, you know, we may face some obstacles in life in order to get to where we need to be. But having the ability and the strength to overcome and overpower more so the negative emotions of, I can't do it, or it's not worth my time, or I can't do anything right. Um, you know, having the ability to try and overcome those emotions can really help us continue to shine and prosper moving forward. Thinking about the big picture, you know, what lies ahead can also lead you to the answers as well. I know some of the answers uh, that you guys have provided mention that, you know, she just started and possibly being non-confrontational about it. Um, you know, sometimes there may be, uh, there might be a bigger picture ahead. You know, maybe Swami has, maybe Swami has plans for us 
uh, with the same job or maybe with another job. Who knows, right? So always looking at the big picture helps us kind of, you know, zone into the present as well. So um, keeping that in mind and always remember that change can bring forth positivity in situations as well. You know, our human nature is to, you know, get comfortable when uh, we feel comfortable. And we try and avoid change as much as we can in some cases. But remember, you know, embracing change sometimes can bring out the best in all of us. So don't fear change. Something to keep in mind as we move ahead. So we have another scenario, and it's caught in the thick of things. So, Raju is an entrepreneur in San Francisco and has done rather well for himself. He has a wife, two kids, and lives in a modest home. His circle of friends are very conspicuous in their mindset. He is uncomfortable with their excessive and wasteful lifestyle that they lead. Many of them are financial investors, and their affinity to take risks is the reason why they are successful. His friends spend money extravagantly, they indulge in substance abuse, and stay out late at night and invest in excessively priced cars. Since most of his friends are his clients, Roger just goes with the flow to avoid losing lucrative business deals. Roger nods and pretends to listen when they elaborate on their risky escapades. He laughs at their body jokes even though he cringes on the inside. He feels guilty when they disrespect women during their conversations and immediately thinks of his wife every time he hears them talk ill of other women. He shares a close bond with his wife, Karishma. She is a stay-at-home mom, and she listens to him vent out his frustrations about the fact that he has to act against his morals and deep-rooted beliefs. He dislikes the facade that he wears only on a daily basis in order to appease his clients. This added stress is starting to take a toll on him. So I'm going to let you guys, you know, absorb that for a minute. And I want to ask you guys, what would you guys do in this situation? If you're constantly going against uh, your morals and beliefs. So I'll give you guys a minute to think about it. What would you guys do in this situation? Prakriti writes... Ask yourself, will Swami approve of this? Always stay true to your conscience and do not cave into peer pressure. Pray to Swami for strength. Very nice. Prajeen writes, you are your company. If you are an entrepreneur, you will do better on your own as well since the traits of entrepreneurship are already innate. Very well said. Indu Pragasham writes, have the courage to keep away from their socialism and keep it purely professional. Sarishan writes, Swami show, says, show me your company and I will show you who you are. Very well said, bro. Thurksha writes, remove yourself from the situation. Your happiness is worth more than a paycheck. Have the courage to stand up for your morals and values. Yuri writes, recently there was something on Science Buyers that said, whoever may commit an offense whether a son, daughter, spouse, a relation, or a close associate, one will be free from the taint of being accessory to the crime only if they oppose the wrong action and try to correct the offender genuinely. Guy 3 writes, sit down and really reevaluate what his values and priorities are, then place boundaries and expectations with his friends and clients, and leave those that don't align with those values. Satyajit writes, I will not mingle with such people, even if it means good uh, delas, money. Swami tells, tell me your company and I will tell you who you are. Very well. Kartika and Arun write, hold on to your principles no matter what the external situation is. Hold on to Swami. Diresh writes, one should stay true to their morals and beliefs as it defines who you are as a person. If you act against your morals and beliefs, you are being untrue to yourself. And Dr. Somnath writes, Not to bother by peer pressure because I have my goal and objectives and a different way to achieve that. Harry writes, I would rather stay away from these situations 
that just add stress and negativity. Your true friends will always love you for who you are and should ultimately understand if you are not comfortable in these situations. Very well put. Those are some awesome, awesome answers, guys. Thank you so much. And absolutely, you know, it is something uh, we've all faced at one point or a time. Um, and quite often, you know, staying true to ourselves uh, leads to good things. So we're going to take a look at the analysis from this story. You know, what, sometimes we, we absorb ourselves in the emotions of what others are doing, and that can often lead to feelings of self-pity and sorrow, uh, which can really uh, have a negative impact on uh, us um, and our mindset just moving forward. So keep in mind that when we do have those emotions, not only does our self-confidence take a hit, but our self-worth in terms of, you know, how do we feel about ourselves, how do we value ourselves takes a hit as well, uh, which can hinder our goal making, our goal and decision-making process moving forward. And sometimes we find ourselves trying to keep up with the Joneses uh, when comparing ourselves to other, what others have. Uh, keeping up with the Joneses is a term used uh, when we try and compare um, our material objects with what other people have. Uh, this can gravely impact our self-esteem, and it leads us down a very slippery slope of greed and envy, which in turn can negate any sort of happiness we have in our lives. Uh, and being happy, you know, at the end of the day, is what we can really use to help create positivity within us. So one example I can think of um, where, you know, just being grateful for what we have um, and, you know, taking a step back and absorbing it. I was having a conversation quite some time ago, uh, going through a bit of a tough patch. And uh, one of the older uh, YAs had recommended, you know, why don't you try thinking of one thing that you're uh, thankful for and writing it in a diary uh, to Swami. Uh, and I've been doing that for the last two and a half months now. And it's really really helped me kind of be more grateful for what I have in my life. Uh, and that's coming up with one different thing every single day, whether that's, you know, grateful for my family, grateful for my friends, grateful for the food that I had today, uh, grateful for, you know, not getting into an accident uh, on the road. So stuff like that, you know, oftentimes we, we always look at the the materialistic items, but even something as big as grateful for getting up in the morning uh, can be just a small thank you to Swami, you know, um, for keeping us up and, um, you know, striving to our goals. So uh, something to keep in mind as we move ahead. Uh, and the next thing on our docket is uh, keeping your head up. So this is a quote by Bill Gates. Uh, Don't compare yourself with anyone in this world. If you do so, you're just insulting yourself. Uh, and it's a quote that I use to continue um, striving ahead, um, even through some tough situations. Next slide, please. So we're going to look at how we can motivate ourselves through self-growth. Um, our own self-growth is of utmost importance when we're trying to achieve the most in life. Uh, and, you know, we might, we we got to try to avoid stunting or deceiving ourselves uh, when trying to be the best version of ourselves. So when setting goals, you know, quite often uh, I find myself asking myself, you know, what sort of small victories can lead to larger victories? Um, you know, similar to the milestones uh, or even the measurables that we set for ourselves or that you guys set for yourselves uh, in the exercise, what sort of small victories can add up? Um, those usually help uh, power me through, you know, whether it's a milestone or an achievable. Uh, being satisfied, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to be satisfied, but we always need to push to be our best version of ourselves uh, and keep it that way. You know, it's uh, it's something that we all strive towards. One thing I, I find myself relating to more often than not is uh, family and Swami. You know, I would not be here, uh, not even remotely, if it wasn't for my family and for the guidance of Swami. 
so I always make sure that, you know, you have family and God intertwined in the process. Uh, and the reason I'm saying this is from personal experience, I can relate that, you know, this really helped me to ach- not only achieve my goals, but give me a sense of satisfaction uh, where I felt at peace with myself. Uh, it's just e- through the goal decision making process, I found, you know, every time I thought of my family and Swami throughout the entire process, I found it more often than not helped me power ahead. Uh, you know, when the going got tough or when it was, when I was facing uh, some negativity or some adversity uh, along my path, I found, you know, just simply thinking of Swami and my family uh, just helped me get through that extra bit uh, where it would power me to get to my goals. So, uh, something to keep in mind, you know, and it helps us stay focused on the path, you know. Um, Sometimes we write or set goals for ourselves and we may sway from it depending on the situation, but keeping family and God in the process uh, helps us stay focused as well. Uh, one last thing I want to share with you guys is writing down your goals. So this is actually this was actually a study that was conducted by Harvard University, uh, and they said they conducted and they uh, came to the conclusion that you're eighty percent more likely to succeed simply by just writing down your goals. So if you have a goal of um, let's say here in Canada, it snowed quite a bit. If I have a goal of shoveling my driveway uh, before the end of tomorrow, it would be something that I would write down on a checklist, and quite more more often than not, I'm going to get it done. Um, whether that's losing 10 pounds or saving up a certain amount to pay for, say, a wedding or whatnot, uh, writing your goals, you're 80% more likely to succeed. So something simple and something just to keep in mind uh, as you guys work towards uh, striving to be the best versions of yourself. So we're going to recap. Um, so we spoke about vision, uh, the ability to think about or plan the future uh, with imagination or wisdom. And we also spoke about resilience, which is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. Uh, we looked at ways on how to identify obstacles and bounce back from tough situations, uh, which we all find ourselves in from time to time. We also looked at how to envision uh, goals through the long-term approach by setting steps and milestones to help us measure our success and how we could motivate ourselves through self-growth uh, so that we can be the best version of ourselves. Um, so those are some of the things that we uh, looked at throughout this workshop. I'm going to open the floor up to some questions uh, and answers, uh, if any of you do have, uh, feel free to write in the chat box, um, and I will try my best to answer them as best as I can. Karthika and Arun write, how to focus on the big picture during tough situations when you don't know what it is? That is something I faced in the past, sister. Um, I know sometimes, uh, in most cases, we leave things in Swami's hands. Um, sometimes the big picture might not seem as clear as it is now. Um, but if we work towards something, uh, maybe even in the short term, where we look at, um, you know, what do we want to achieve, whether that's in another month or a year from now, and where do we want to be, uh, whether that's together or... Um, whether that's uh, by yourself, if if that's something that you find yourself maybe uh, in a year from now, I want to be at a certain point in my life. Um, quite often, if you get to that one, what like that uh, that short term goal, uh, sometimes the long term picture can become a little more clear. I'll use the example of uh, when I was in school. Um, so I started off. Uh, wanting to uh, be a doctor quite some time ago. Um, so I entered school uh, and I actually applied to be an engineer because um, I was a little confused on what I wanted to do and I kept switching back and forth uh, 
until I finally ended up settling on being an engineer after my third year of university. So I can I can relate to, you know, sometimes the big picture wasn't as clear. You know, I didn't I certainly didn't envision myself being where I am today. Um, but I found myself when I'm in that situation, I look to a short term approach uh, where I can t- tell myself, you know, I will try this for one year and see where it gets me. And if I like what I'm doing, then I will move ahead and see where that takes me. And if I don't, then I'll make a change. So breaking it up, I guess, into a a shorter timeline uh, can sometimes help as well. Not Hopefully that answers your question. Virginia writes, if a call comes between being resilient and being ethical in the example of the finance executive, what would you deem to be more important? I would say being ethical. Uh, it, for me, it would be a it would be an even split actually, fifty uh, fifty. Being resilient and ethical, um, more so along the ethical line. So maybe not an even split, but um, for me, ethics is a huge thing, even in my profession too. Um, so if I'm staying being ethical not only situationally based but also in terms of my morals and beliefs um, I find decision making to be a lot easier it's just you sleep better at night Harry writes I oftentimes struggle with going out of my way for other people which leads me to get hurt as I'm often taken for granted Should I just stop being this way? Is the purpose of life being selfless or having self-love? Something I often struggle with, how to achieve that balance. That's a very interesting question, bro. Uh, Perhaps we could take that offline. I wouldn't mind talking to you about that. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, email the the YATD team with that. uh, And we could touch base and talk about that. Oh, you're very welcome, Karthika and Arun, Sairam. Um, Well, I see that there's no other questions. So I would like to thank, once again, Swami for this blessed opportunity to speak with you all and the YATD team for allowing me to speak on this month's workshop. Uh, I do thank you all for uh, tuning in and listening. Uh, And I guess with that, I will hand it over to the YATD team and Jay Sairam to you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Sion, for this energetic and engaging workshop on how to survive setbacks and to keep striving. I'm sure we've all learned something from this workshop. The next YTD workshop for February will be on the 23rd of Feb. Please keep an eye on social media to find out more about the YATD workshop. We recommend that if you have not done so already, to like the Satya Sai Young Adult page on Facebook or Instagram. Keep up to date with the latest on the workshop. Recordings of the past workshops are available on the official SSIO YouTube channel, the playlist called SSIO Young Adult Talent Development Program. Thank you, everyone. Let's close to this, today's session with one Om and three Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti.